of us. Hey, everybody. We're back with the author of Betrayal, ABC News chief Washington correspondent Jonathan Carl. You went down to Mar-a-Lago and, and interviewed the former president for the book, as you said. Yeah. Um, after January 6th, John Kelly said that he, to you, I believe, that he believed that the president was mentally unfit to serve in the Oval Office. He wanted the 25th Amendment to be invoked okay. immediately. He told me that while the rioters were still in the building. That this is it. They should yes. invoke it. They, they should unfit. meet right now and they should get him out now. Um, what is, you've talked to the man recently. What is his mental state? Um, <laughs> that's a, that's a, that's a, it's a tough one. I, look, I went down to see him. Uh, the first interview for the book was in Mar-a-Lago, um, just about a month and a half after he left office. Um, and you know, he looked fine. He looked fit. You know, a lot of presidents age in office. He doesn't seem like he actually aged in office. It's weird. Yes. Um, uh, but uh, some people don't age. It's suspicious. It's Jonathan very Carl. suspicious. Uh, but he was utterly delusional. Um, in, especially in talking about the events of January 6th. We, we have a clip here, and I'm just curious if you could set this up. Do you know what's, what's happening here? Yeah, this is, uh, I was talking to him about the day. Um, and, uh, and where are you talking to him? Because uh, it sounds weird. It's weird. Yeah, I'm sorry for the sound. It's, in the, it's at Mar-a-Lago. He made me do this interview in the middle of the lobby at Mar-a-Lago right before dinner. He wanted everybody that came to dinner to see him being interviewed. So that's why you hear people walking by and... And by the way, he has said a lot of terrible things about me, but in, 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 the, in the transcript of this interview, there, he says, oh, I'm with the great Jonathan Carl. Here he is. And this is the same guy that's called me a lot of names. Um, uh, and, uh, but yeah, he wanted to be seen. But we're in the middle of the lobby, and I'm asking about January 6th. Jim? So some people were saying 1776. If it's rigged, if it's being stolen, why not charge well, I, the Capitol? I, know. I, did, I hadn't heard that, but people were very angry. And people were there, that crowd. Never, the press, the fake news, which is fake, uh, the fake news never talked about the size of that crowd. That crowd was a massive crowd. It was a massive crowd. I mean, so he's, uh, he's missing the narrative here. He yeah, thinks can you imagine I'm asking it's him about, about whether he's popular. Yeah, I'm asking him about a riot. I'm asking about the, the, one of the darkest days in American history, and he's talking about how many people came out to see him. Um, now, I understand you also have a fight with Mike Pence right now, a disagreement <laughs> about something. This is fascinating to me. Tell the people what it is. Okay, so I found out that during the riot, Mike Pence had with him the entire time a photographer, an official White House photographer, uh, who captured images of that entire period, including the roughly five hours where Pence was hidden away in the bowels of the Capitol in a place that nobody's ever really known because he refused to leave. He wanted to stay there. They got him out of the Senate chamber and they took him somewhere. Nobody ever... While people are erecting gallows yes, across the street. exactly. And uh, so I got a hold of the photographer. I actually saw all of the photographs. You saw them. I saw all the photographs. And by the way, it is wild to see that he was in a loading dock in an underground parking garage uh, beneath the Capitol uh, complex. No place to sit, no uh, desk, no chairs, no nothing. He was in this concrete, like, uh, parking garage. And... Um, you know, with his family and, in a, I mean, it, this is the vice president of the United States and he's like holed up in a, in a basement. And I went to the vice president, the former vice president, and I asked him if I could publish those photographs. I think they're part of the historical record. And I understand really important. one of the photographs is him literally looking at the tweet of, of yes. the president saying, Mike Pence. One of them is his chief of staff, uh, Mark Short, showing him his phone. And it's the tweet of Trump saying, Mike Pence didn't have the courage. This is the guy who like fled the, the rioters, mm -hmm. and Trump is saying it on the courage, and and you can see it kind of looks like Pence is grimacing, but you can never really tell. I don't know. Um, uh, but but the, but the fight you referred to is uh, they refused to let me publish the photographs. But I have but, a suspicion yes. that the January sixth committee is going to want to see those photos. Now. And those aren't his photos. No, no, they're, they're your photos. They're everybody's photos here. We paid for those we photos. We paid for them. They're taken by the White House photographer. Those are part of the National Archives. Yes, and they're part of the historic record on a day that we need to see the historic record. Well, Jonathan, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. The book is Betrayal. It's available November 16th. Jonathan Carl, everybody. We'll be right back with Brandy Carlisle. Thanks, Jonathan.